Hello. Hi. I'm Josh Elliott. I'm Cooper Frank. And today we are reviewing the 1517 to Paris. So Josh, <laughs> your opinion on the 1517 to Paris. I think this is the best movie of 2018 so far. Honestly, I think it's the best movie to ever be made. God himself couldn't have created something yes. better than the 1517 to Paris. So Clint Eastwood is God. It's like God, Clint Eastwood. <laughs> if you couldn't tell by all that. We hated this movie. We've been very sarcastic. This movie is <laughs> one of the worst movies I've ever seen. So basically, 1517 in Paris starts out with these two kids in school. They have ADD, they don't fit in, and then they meet this other kid who's a troublemaker, and then they all start to be troublemakers together. But not like actual troublemakers, like they're like just late to class. And then they grow up, two of them sign up for the army, and one <laughs> doesn't. Some stuff happens, and he's like, hey, we're gonna go to Italy. And so out of nowhere, he calls up his old friend, and he's like, yeah, I'll go to Italy. They spend about two hours in Italy. So they get on the train to go to Paris. A terrorist attack happens. They stop it. And then the last five minutes, it's like a documentary. It's a true story. And the actual guys that did it are yeah. playing themselves in this movie. Mm -hmm. Which maybe sounds good on paper, but it sucks. They're not good actors. They're not actors. I wouldn't even really describe them as people. Somehow these guys are cast as themselves and fail at being themselves. A large part of that's the writing, though. I guess that's it's true. It's so lazily written. This movie is about three ordinary guys that did an amazing thing. But it tells the story of their lives before it happened, but there's nothing interesting about their lives before this thing Absolutely happened. Absolutely nothing. It's pretty much just a normal person's life. I think casting the actual guys is an excuse for lazy direction as well. Because Clint Eastwood, he probably didn't have to give them much character acting. He probably just said, oh, say the line the way you would say. Yeah. But then how do you mess that up? The whole time you're just thinking, okay, when's it gonna start? And then like halfway through you're like, oh, this movie's not gonna start. <laughs> it's never going to start. It starts at the climax. Yeah, <laughs> it starts at the climax and the movie pretty much ends also at the climax. It doesn't show pretty much their lives after it happened. Yeah. Which I think could have been interesting. Clint Eastwood kind of did that in Sully a couple years ago. That movie took place after The Ordinary Person did The Amazing Thing. And he's mm -hmm. like, I don't feel like a hero. I feel like I just did my job. The movie wasn't that great, but that was kind of compelling. Whereas 1517 to Paris, it doesn't explore that. Yeah, at the end, it's like, here are the heroes of yeah. Paris. And then there's one guy. There's four people that got the medals, but only three of them get a movie. Technically, only one of them really gets a movie. That's true. The thing that pissed me off is that he is the lead character of this movie. It is mostly about him as opposed to all three of them equally even though they all pretty much did an equal job in stopping this guy. I wouldn't say that. Well, I think the only reason he's the lead is because he ran directly at the guy with the gun pointed at him. And he's the only one who really got injured. He tried to carry the movie, but like none of them are strong enough actors to carry a movie. So I think it would have been better if it was like all three of them. They were in Italy for no joke, more than half of the movie doing absolutely nothing. They're just walking around in Italy with like their selfie stick and they're just like making really, really bad small talk. The guy with the selfie stick is saying like the same thing over and over and over again. There's a scene where the characters order gelato at a restaurant and that's the entire yeah, scene. Yeah, that's the entire <laughs> scene. I'm sitting there like my mouth is agape. I'm like, oh. Am I, am I really watching that? <laughs> In the middle of Italy, they, they meet up with this girl on a boat. They go get food, and then they discuss about going to Paris, and she's like, I didn't really like Paris. And then she's just gone. After that scene, she never comes back. She's never mentioned ever again. The three main actors are bad, but I think the kid actors are debatably worse. Even though the three leads are not natural actors, they still have a natural chemistry simply because they, they know, know each, each other. Yeah. But the three kids, you can tell they're just reading lines. Their whole characters are basically like, we're mad because we're different. The school like treats being late to class like they just vandalize mm -hmm. the entire bathroom. The bell rings and then immediately she's just like, you guys should be in class. And they're like, we're on our way. And he's like, go to the principal's office. And like, that doesn't happen. All of the adults in this movie are terrible people. Instead of like talking like adults, they talk like they're political figureheads. Like the teacher's like, uh, your son has ADD. I believe that they're being disrespectful and they need to be put on medication. And the mom's like, no, we don't need that medication. I am not a bad parent. I am a good parent. And it's just like, people don't talk like that. There's one good thing about this movie and that's the train scene. And it's not even like great. I just feel like that's the only scene where I got a sense that they actually tried. And I wasn't bored out of my mind. The actors all looked comfortable 
because that was something they actually did. They and weren't talking. That was the only scene where Clint Eastwood's direction wasn't completely tasteless and devoid of style. It actually had a sense of urgency. The editing was all right, but it only lasts like 10 minutes. As you can tell like what a special director's movie's like. Like Quentin Tarantino, like you know what a Quentin mm -hmm. Tarantino movie looks like. Watching this movie, I wasn't like, oh, this is Clint Eastwood. I have seen Clint Eastwood movies, and I actually think that this is undeniably a Clint Eastwood movie simply because there is no style to it. <laughs> so it's so bland that it's become his trademark. The movie had no point. There was no point for this movie to be made. No one sat down and was like, hey, this concept for this story is not a good idea, which should have happened. Somebody should have been like, hey, Clint, buddy, this is stupid. It's not interesting, it's not compelling, it's kind of insulting. It's not boring enough to fall asleep to because you're just so amazed at how <laughs> god-awful it is. Yeah. Do you want to do final verdicts? Yeah. The train scene is the only scene in this movie where anyone actually tried. Clint Eastwood, the actors, the editors, everyone just kind of phoned it in for the rest of this movie. It's so boring. It's, cool. it's so plain and bland and just hollow because it's about ordinary people doing something great, but it chooses to make so much of it about just their ordinary lives. And on top of that, they, they don't even act ordinary. They don't talk like ordinary people. They don't act like ordinary people. It almost makes me more mad that that final scene is good because they have it in them. They just didn't try for the rest of it. And so I'll give it a one just for that one scene. I agree to a point they tried in the last scene. It's not so much they tried, it's just so much that they didn't have anything to say. They already went through what they did, so they just had to recreate that without talking. You know what? That's probably the easiest thing they could have ever done. Everything in this movie, I felt, was a wrong choice. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I'm a grade A director and that I should have taken the reins on this movie and made it better, but goddamn, I could have made this movie a hundred times better than Clint Eastwood could. Mm -hmm. One of the major things was the actors and just the story in general. Man oh man, I'm gonna give this one misfiring Kalishnikov out of 10. So the final verdict for mm -hmm. the 1517 to Paris is a one out of 10. <laughs> what did you think of the 1517 to Paris? Please comment below to let us know. First time we make a review, just the two of us and we actually, we agree, actually agree on, on something. something. <laughs> We're just disappointed. Yeah. Peace out guys. See ya. All right. Hey guys, uh, it's Cooper here. So if you enjoyed this video, please drop a fat like and um, you know, comment. If you want to watch another video of us reviewing something, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. If you think that Josh is ugly, uh, leave a comment and say Josh is ugly. And if you think Cooper's a 10 out of 10, um, don't do anything. <laughs> All right, this is, yeah. <laughs>